Uh, yeah, that's right, America. Uh, a lot of this has really picked up steam maybe in the last few weeks, but it really started on September 6th when I came back. Did I mention the open heart surgery and they ripped up my chest, stopped my heart for about five hours? Oh, you heard that? Okay. Anyway, I'm back. And, like, you are welcome. And it's the least I could do. You're very understanding. A lot of you sent me some very nice food items that I couldn't eat because, like I said, it was like a heart thing. Uh, but the kids enjoyed it. But bottom line, I thought, what can I do for you when I come back to work? And I hope you like this little bull market rally I sort of cooked up for you. But enough about me. Back to the dollar and how it's responding to me. It is strong and getting stronger. It just hit a 14-year high uh, against the euro. Uh, and yet that is not hitting stocks that badly. In fact, those that dominate the Dow, then they're big guys, right? Uh, you would think the strong dollar hits them hard when their foreign earnings are translated back into dollars. They're going to get fewer dollars for them, right? So net, net, not great for them. Well, funny way of showing it, right? And look at the 10-year Treasury note a rate over which the Federal Reserve has no control. That's the highest we've seen in more than two years. So you'd naturally be saying, my goodness, stocks are taken on the chin. They are not. And you know, this guy called it early on, not only because he was supporting Donald Trump, but nobody was, uh, but just like his namesake in Buffalo, New York, he never gave up on that community. And Carl Palladino, who was former Republican candidate for governor, when he hears all these people complaining about, it's cold, it's cold, we've got Arctic blast. In Buffalo, it's nine degrees below zero in July. So Carl is just hearing this and saying, what? Anyway, he joins us right now. Carl, good to have you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Neil. I, I can say I that you, now. I know you yeah. wanted to thank me for this market rally, but you're welcome. Anything oh, I can do. It's awesome. Uh, it's just awesome. It, is, it really is. It's just ludicrous. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the guy you backed has a, a, a few things to do with this. A lot of optimism uh, over what he's going to do and how quickly he's going to do it. As a shrewd businessman in your own right, do you ever counsel him about unintended expectations or that people might be getting ahead of themselves or how you dial that back so people aren't disappointed with the, the way Washington generally moves, even if he's moving at a blistering pace? The Donald Trump you're seeing now is the Donald Trump I've known. He's the guy that is... He will, he will occasionally change gears and he'll shift positions and, and that, but you always know that it's a calculated move on his part. Uh, he doesn't make mistakes, uh, doesn't make them on, on, on purpose. And in this case, for instance, on infrastructure, they're working very, very hard right now so that this infrastructure program hits the ground running as soon as, as, soon as he takes office. And, 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 I mean, there's a battery of people involved in every issue that's, that, that he oh, talked about it's, in it's the campaign. I've never and, seen anything like it. But here's what I worry about just when people, you know, they get excited and all of a sudden, you know, we know how Washington works, Carl, and things take time. Mm -hmm. uh, even when you're under one-party control, uh, how do you prepare people for that? It's just sort of like when you're turning over things around in your company, you're going through a tough spate there. You've got to keep their spirits up, even though they might get ahead of themselves. What do you do? I, I think you have to gradually move them into this different pace. Uh, if, for instance, Congress. Congress is a mopey, slow, uh, turtle, turtle walking across the road type <laughs> of operation. Uh, uh, we're going we're gonna to see a Donald Trump pushing them and pushing them to get moving faster, okay, and to bring us into this new era. This new era is going to be an era of creativity. It's going to be an era of changing things. Uh, I, heard, I heard last night that there's up to 2,000 uh, executive orders and, and uh, uh, rules and regulations that they've already focused on that are going to be changed virtually immediately. Uh, it's a whole different perspective. And, and the Obama people, uh, they, they should just get out of town because they're going to be going crazy down there in Washington uh, watching this, watching something that they thought was so difficult that's not difficult. It's, it's a matter that you, when you're running your own business, when you're running, in this case, a country, you get moving, you start answering questions, you motivate people, and you don't let them slow down. Um, what do you make, Carl, of uh, a lot of these folks who are, who are urging the electors to assess this Russian hacking data and decide maybe change your vote? It's, it's sad that the press actually gives them... Uh, uh, puts them on the front page with that nonsense. It's, it's pure nonsense. If you look at it from Putin's perspective, Donald Trump was the last guy that he would have wanted to be president. 
just, I mean, Donald Trump talked about things like he did with Mattis and pointing. Uh, when the message he sent out with General Mattis was, was don't mess with us. And, and, uh, and Putin, Putin doesn't necessarily like guys like that. He loved, the, he loved rolling over Obama. He would have rolled over uh, uh, Hillary just the same way. Uh, because these progressives don't have the intestinal fortitude to take on the demons, and, right. and uh, Donald Trump does. Yeah. Carl, great seeing you again. Be well, my friend. All right.